Over the last few weeks here on Ag PhD, we've been talking about different nutrients. Today, we're going to focus on zinc. Well, zinc is certainly a nutrient that farmers are adding in, in many cases, whenever they're putting corn out in the field. We talk to farmers all over the country. They say, yep, I know I have to add some zinc, so I'm putting zinc in every time. And if I ask those farmers that are putting a little bit of zinc in, oftentimes it's a quart of a 9% chelated zinc. They're dropping it right in the furrow or in a two by two. If I said, do you think you're getting enough zinc out there? I would say, almost everyone would say, well, yeah, I'm putting a quart out every time I'm planting the corn. But start thinking about where our yields are at now. If you're exceeding 200 bushel corn, as many farmers across the country did again this year, how much zinc are you actually removing from the field when you haul 200 bushel corn away? Oftentimes you're looking at two tenths of a pound of zinc, maybe even more. Well, a quart of a 9% zinc product has roughly two tenths of a pound of zinc. So even if you're able to extract 100% of the zinc that you put out, which let's face it, you're probably not able to get all of that, you'd be taking everything away. You would be going backwards on a two-year rotation just putting zinc out there with one of your two crops. That's why we're talking about it today. Zinc is important for many different things in the plant, including moisture efficiency. So absolutely, you want to have good zinc levels if you're hoping to have top yields. But here's one other thing that I want you to consider with zinc. It's not just about your plant. It's about overall soil health. This is one of those nutrients that we want to have at least halfway decent levels of all throughout your soil because if you have that, then typically you're going to have a little bit more microbial activity. So I'm not saying we have to way overload the soil or anything like that, but I am just saying we don't want to be completely deficient in our soil and just try to throw a little bit out for this year's crop and call it good. Ideally, and especially if we own the ground, we'd like to get the soil levels up to a halfway decent level. And a lot of times what we're looking at for a level is we'd like to be at least two or three parts per million, but if you've got really high phosphorus levels, we usually talk about a 10 to one ratio. So if let's say that we had 100 parts per million of available phosphorus, we would wanna see about 10 parts per million of available zinc. That's a great point to make, Brian. Fertility balance in the soil is so critical, and zinc is one of those awesome examples. If you look at Mulder's chart, you can see that certain nutrients are going to interact with one another. Some nutrients are gonna be a positive interaction where, hey, if I have more of this nutrient, it helps me with the other one. But some are gonna fight against each other, like phosphorus and zinc. If you've got too much phosphorus, as Brian mentioned, our zinc levels need to be higher or our plants are gonna show deficiency more commonly. Yeah, that's something we ran into on our own farm. We thought many years ago, oh, let's just raise the P and K up, that'll be great. Well, then we started ending up with micronutrient deficiencies, especially zinc. You gotta have these things in ratio, and that's one of the reasons why we talk all the time here on the show about balance of nutrients in the soil. One other thing to consider with zinc is there are so many different zinc sources out there. Which ones should you use? Should you use the dry, should you use the liquid, and are the chelates actually worth the money. What are you gonna do with zinc, Brian? There's lots of different ways to put it on. Well, zinc chelate, I, I do think all the chelates are important if we're just trying to feed the plant. So we'll use a little bit of zinc chelate too, right with the planter. But I'd say this, if we're at one part per million today and we need to go to six parts per million within the next couple years, I'm probably gonna look at zinc sulfate and a broadcast application because I can do that very inexpensively. You have to be at least a little bit careful because we don't wanna way overdo it. So you gotta have the right spreader to, to make these applications, but in terms of cost, the dry is way cheaper than the liquid, but if I can have zinc chelate, yes, that's a nice way to help feed that crop right now this year. You can also do a little bit of foliar feeding with zinc as well. And keep in mind, zinc does not move very well through the soil, so you probably want to do some tillage to put it down in the soil or inject that down underneath the soil a little bit because if you get any amount of erosion, well, the zinc is going to stay in that top half inch of soil unless you move it down. So any erosion would wash it off the field. And oftentimes that's where I see the worst zinc problems in fields is on side hills because there's been erosion over the years. Well, zinc is a tremendously important nutrient. Make sure you're testing your soils and applying zinc where needed. Another thing that's important if you want top yields is great weed control. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 